Hey, what's up everyone? So this is going to be the 95th opening that I'd like to share with you, which is the Raccoon Dog opening. So just coming from, uh, you know, the Rocket branch, uh, we are moving on to the Raccoon Dog branch of openings. It's a, another main branch uh, that you probably can select as black against a white diagonal player. So of course, we start off with F5, the usual diagonal sequence, up to D6, and then over here, Basically, D7 is like the new branch that we're looking at, which is the raccoon dog opening. So D7, um, this would be a minus 4 uh, based on the software, at least for now, in terms of the uh, valuation. But I would say that um, something really interesting about this opening is that uh, you can potentially trap your opponent if your opponent is studying the book only to a few moves ahead as a white diagonal player. So typically, um, most white diagonal players wouldn't uh, miss this move because it's a nice centralized cutback. Uh, even though it's two discs, it's controlling like kind of like a mini checkerboard whereby you're controlling the F um, column and this mini diagonal between D6 and E5 disc. So this F4 becomes kind of like a pocket space that you can control. So um, most of the players wouldn't be able to miss this as white. So actually the, as black, that's what uh, you would want to do. So of course over here, even though the software is recommending C6 or G4 as the better ones, um, the one, the line that I kind of learned from a Japanese player is uh, from Hayatis is uh, this g6 move which is quite interesting so typically if your opponent follows the best move to e7 over here just to centralize and regroup the dispersed four this over here and one this over here they regroup this so over here um instead of playing maybe you know looking at c5 looking at c6 you go for this interesting um vertical cut down to the edge at e8 so um so basically, after you've played this move, uh, most players uh, tend to select to play F8 instead of F7. I think F7 over here, the software is recommending it to be a plus 6 and being the best, uh, slightly over F8 perhaps, if you will. But most players actually would select F8 also because they want to feed off the unbalanced edge and also grab the next move to F7 over here. So... The interesting observation that I have is most players would select uh, F8 instead of F7. So let's talk about F8 uh, being the most common variation. And of course, after F8 is played, you then play F7 uh, to kind of allow white to form that nice balanceable edge. So almost everyone will select D8. So I think this is fairly common and it's, uh, you know, very common to see this sequence being played out if this were the opening. So as black, I would say that, you know, when I play Raccoon Dog opening, I think maybe somewhere between 60 to 70% of players play the sequence out, perhaps. Um, and then followed by this creation of this strong edge, seemingly strong edge for white. And of course, you then play C8, and you threaten to pick up the edge, uh, you know. And then over here, white would typically defend the edge because... Um, g8 is a balanceable 6 this edge but at the same time you can play to the x square a very early x square uh, for black at the same time you're feeding off the corner and you can go for the wedge so it kind of threatens your opponent or, or dares your opponent whether he wants to go in or not and of course usually this does not happen uh, instead they will just take the additional spare move over here the c7 just to form up the edge so interestingly when you play to c5 continuation it then becomes uh, quite counterintuitive for white to actually follow up the, the sequences uh, that follows behind uh, for the best move. So typically, you know, you probably wouldn't want to leave a one square gap in this way, and it becomes super easy for black to actually play the follow-up. So wherever white plays, black just kind of follows. Uh, so I think even if you play c6, it wouldn't be that terrible, even though the software is recommending b3, probably because of this momentary uh, mini diagonal control between d5 and e4 disc over here. So I would say uh, probably the safer option to go is just to jump into c6. And interestingly, you can see that, hey, this is a diagonal cut. You have to feed off easy moves to black uh, in order to try to retain that uh, lead. And at the same time, the game is fairly even. I would say if you compare both sides, uh, the best moves for both sides, uh, it's so much harder for white to actually get the, the correct sequences. 
in terms of this move perhaps or even other moves like maybe white could play here you could jump into the center and white criss crosses back and then you can just cut across diagonally so even if white does this you can easily nestle yourself in the middle so the attractive thing about this opening is that uh, once you kind of get this sequence played out uh, it becomes very intuitive for black and very counterintuitive for white so i would say that you know this is an interesting opening to use, especially for blitz games. Uh, I think most players tend to play uh, f8 thinking that you know maybe your opponent will take the unbalanced edge and then you can slot in for the advantage over here. So yeah, and of course the counter action is that if white were to correctly, uh, correctly uh, select f7, then you would just jump in to kind of regroup all of this in a fairly kind of like diamond shape over here or square shape. Uh, with c6 and then white will have to cut back into the center and again it's still fairly intuitive for you to kind of follow up moves even though you throw up a, a bit of an advantage to your opponent so it's still quite intuitive for you to follow up so that's kind of like uh, the raccoon dog opening for you and hopefully you like this opening and you know if you like it just you know consider trying it out giving it a go at blitz games perhaps so thank you very much for joining me and i'll see you in the next one goodbye